Hello, my name is Ruxanda Tudose, and in this video I'm going to present to you my free of choice circuit for the embedded electronics course here at KDH. Welcome to Cooks. Here's the circuit schematic which I used in order to build my circuit on the breadboard. And I have already performed the transient simulation whose graph you can see below. To begin with, uh, we have a sinusoidal voltage source whose amplitude I set to 2 volts. Two resistors, one here, one here. This resistor is connecting the sinusoidal um, voltage source to the uh, non-inverting input of the operational amplifier, while the other one is connecting, connecting the output of the operational amplifier back to the non-inverting input. Uh, the inverting input is connected to ground. Then we have these two parts, very important parts. Uh, the operational amplifier needs the plus VCC and the minus VCC. The plus VCC uh, is here. I set it to 506 because this is what I got on the breadboard and it's positive. While the other one is negative. Why is that important? Because the way you calculate voltage is the potential at the plus side minus the potential at minus side. We have plus here. So 506 minus 0, which is here, so we have a positive value, while here we're going to do 0 because this is the potential at the plus side minus the value here, which is 4.64, so we get a negative value. If we were to analyze the graph of the transient simulation, we first have the blue graph, which represents PR2, PR2, so it's the input voltage, so it comes as no surprise that it has a sinusoidal voltage source with the amplitude of 2 because this is how I set it. Uh, however, the blue graph, it's PR1, it's the potential uh, with respect to ground uh, at, the uh, at the operational amplifier's output, it no longer has um, a sinusoidal form but uh, a square wave. All in all, this is what I have achieved using uh, the Schmidt trigger. I have managed to tr turn a sinusoidal voltage source into a square wave. What I also expected, if we were to insert a marker here on the graph, you can see that the amplitude here is around 3.54, while here it's around minus 312. In other words, I was expecting here when I set the marker to also see minus 3.54. Uh, this is the circuit built on breadboard. I have connected the picoscope, the AWG, the arbitrary wave generator, to the circuit in order to generate my input signal. This is this is the uh, input that goes here. This is the very first resistor from the schematic. Um, then this is the second one that connects the output uh, to the plus of the operational amplifier. Pin 4 with 505 volts approximately and the opposite pin minus 4 65 64 this is how i set up my pico scope in order to perform measurements on my laptop here is the pico scope analysis what i would like to first point out is that the both graphs channel a the blue one and channel b the red one have the exact same shapes as the ones simulated in cooks which we can therefore conclude that the circuit has both been built and behaves correctly what's interesting is that if i change the type of the input signal for instance to a triangle wave we can see that the Schmidt trigger fulfills its purpose. It therefore stabilizes this triangle input signal to either a higher state or a lower state. If I were to measure the amplitude here, I would get 4.3 uh, volts, while here I would get minus 3.229, which is quite a bit of a difference compared to the one simulated in Cooks. In real life, we wish for clearer signals, but Rarely do we get them either because of noise or because of other external circumstances over which we have no control. And that is exactly when the Schmidt trigger comes in handy because it helps me clean the signals. And what do I mean by that is it helps me set the output to either a higher state or a lower state. And it can do that because it has high, a property called hysteresis. So if this was my upper uh, voltage threshold and this was my input signal, only when my input signal goes above this um, this value does my output reach its high state and stays there up until the input signal goes below the lower 
uh, threshold and reaches its low state and then again stays there up until again the input goes above the upper threshold and stays there and so on and so forth. I hope you find found this video interesting and thank you very much for watching.